Just one of those days, isn't it? What a champagne day of racing. Excuse the pun, but uh, it is at Caulfield today. We do have correct weight after the Coonji Stakes with uh, Mr Lofty beating Little Miss Quick and also Society Bow. It was a short head by a short neck. Let's check the dividends. Number five, Mr Lofty, 370 and 170. 10, Little Miss Quick, 550. Two, Society Bow, $2. Quinella, 39.20. Trifecta, 331.20. Race six today, the Melbourne Racing Club stakes. Group three, 1,400 metres, carries $125,000 in prize money. Here's the field. One assertive lad, Jim Cassidy. Two sports, Darren Beedman. Three, Bacarda, Damien Oliver. Four, Fritz Stephen Arnold. Five, Prince Rubiton, Nashra Willer. Six, El Nino, Greg Childs. Seven, Flavor, Brett Preble. Nine, Jay's Jump, Craig Newitt. Ten, Salgado, Darren Gauchi. 11, Freira Jaka, Kieran McAvoy, 12, Kennett, Craig Williams, 13, Al Bulbar, Reese McLeod, 14, Pomeroy, Glenn Boss, and 15, Tarkula Midnight, Lonigan Millam. It'll be an opening betting, open betting race, I'm sure, this one with Fritz and Prince Rubiton in the market. So will the Carlton Draft Caulfield Cup to tell us about both those races, Greg Radley. No prices up yet on the uh, sixth race here at Caulfield, but I've just spoken to Alan Iskander from Iskander Racing, and... Uh, a client of his is back to lean vitality to win a hundred thousand dollars and also dash for cash to win a hundred thousand dollars so they've been two decent bets today dash for cash about a 10 to 1 chance helene vitality about a 15 to 1 chance uh, so far northerly's the favorite he's about 460 in front of fields of omar at five dollars they were both around the 460 mark but uh, fields of omar just getting out They've been the two best back runners with a scander so far, Helene Vitality and Dash for Cash on this day at the moment. Thanks for that, uh, Greg. So uh, the latest on the Caulfield Cup. Let's go back to the Melbourne Racing Club and the opening totes. One assertive lad, 17.20, two sports, 18.10, three Bacarda, $14, four Fritz, 5.80, five Prince Rubiton, 4.30, six El Nino, 5.10, Seven Flavor 17.10, nine Jay's Jump 14.20, ten Salgado 7.40, eleven Freira Jaka 58.40, twelve Kenneth 28.10, thirteen Al Bulbar 98, fourteen Pomeroy 42.50, fifteen Tarkula Midnight 27.90. Plenty of value as you'd expect in a race like this, Max. Uh, who are you leaning towards? I thought Salgado could win. Uh, Salgado. Uh, uh, it would appear his form in Sydney is not all that flash, but when you look closely at it, he's been racing against top-class horses. He hasn't had the best of luck, and he's been reasonably close at the finish. I think he'll appreciate uh, uh, perhaps the, the company today. Certainly the 13 gate is a worry, but Darren Gouch, you'll have to overcome that. Graham Sampiri going for Fritz, who ran a very good race here on Wednesday. Max, you've seen a sort of lad. Uh, we saw him at Flemington. He didn't do much. You saw him first up. Could he jump up today? He's a Doncaster winner. Well, anything's possible in racing, Bruce, but I'd like to see a if lad show something like his best form before I go into it. OK, Gay has won a race today, so who knows? The omens might be good with a if lad. Lots of celebrities here and personalities, and one man who's been out and about is Rupert McCall. Well, this time next year, the Rugby World Cup will be absolutely roaring along, and one man who will be there, he hopes, is Wallaby flanker Phil Waugh. It's going to be good, mate. It's going to be huge. It's going to be great to have, I guess, playing all over the country, and uh, you know, it should be a big event. I guess it's probably going to be the biggest thing since the Olympics. Especially a home World Cup. Yeah, I was over in uh, Carter for the last World Cup, and it was just the whole atmosphere of the place was just buzzing, and it's just, uh, you know, to play at home, it's going to be something extra. Phil, you've done a little bit of a magical miss, although it's the ankle that's causing you problems. Uh, you won't be going on the European tour, but uh, how's it coming along? It's coming along really well. I've played five games now, and uh, the ankle feels good. Still a bit tight, but it's, it's getting better. And, you know, with a good off-season, hopefully I'll uh, swing into the Super 12 next year. All guns blazing. Now, uh, tickets for the World Cup go on sale this weekend, tomorrow, I think. Can you give us a bit of a spiel on that? Yeah, I think uh, this booklet here is going to be uh, out into the newspapers and, uh, and around the place. And I think everyone in Australia has got an opportunity to buy some tickets. And, uh, you know, as I said, it's just going to be a huge event. The guys, all the Wallabies, just can't wait for it to happen. And uh, to get the support of the whole country is going to be, uh, you know, special. Well, after the Caulfield Cup, we should have some money in our pockets to buy some World Cup tickets if you can give us the winner. Oh, mate, Fields of Omar and Dash for Cash. Cronella there, they can't lose. Can't go wrong with Phil Wharf. All the best, mate. Thanks, Rupert.
Phil Waugh there talking with Rupert McCall about Australians uniting for the World Cup. We've seen Australians unite this week, haven't we? So the National Appeal and tribute to the victims and families of the Bali tragedy. Sunday from 6.30 Eastern, the telephone number is 1800 339 888. Frances Murphy also on the course like Rupert McCall and she's caught up with a familiar face. One of the judges of fashions on the field today is Steve Vizard. Now, Steve, how do you prepare for such a job like this? I've been in training for a few uh, weeks, Francis. I've been looking through women's catalogues, uh, hanging around dress shops, um, badgering women on the streets. I, I think, uh, you know, you've got to put in the hours, but uh, if you're going to take on a role like this, you've, you've, you've got to do the, the hard yards. Now we're having a sneak preview of some of the entrants here behind us. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for anyone. Uh, <laughs> this generally. I, no, I think I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for sexy. I'm looking for cute. Uh, I'm looking for personality. And then in the clothes department, uh, I'm looking for pretty much. <laughs> no, no, really. I think it's a. It's a total concept. I mean, look, these are all fantastic. Um, and your your name is. Oh, Selena. Selena. Well, yes. You look absolutely beautiful, Thank Selena. You. I think the trick is you've got to look for what's fashionable at the moment, uh, and um, and what uh, and also what people have made themselves. I think if people have made whipped something up themselves, for example, I made this suit last night. I was going to say, looking stunning there. Well, I do hope you have a fantastic day, fashions on the field, Judge. Thanks, Francis. I really appreciate it, and you look absolutely beautiful too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> He's always been a good judge, hasn't he? Steve Vizard there with Francis Murphy. Well, the bookmakers have opened the bidding now on the Melbourne Racing Club Cup, and to tell us about it, Greg Radley. Prince of Rubiton opens the favourite here, about $3.50. There are four runners under double figures with the bookmakers. Fritz at about $5, El Nino at about 8 and Salgado kept nice and firm at $6 also. Prince Rubiton's the favourite at uh, $3.50. In Derby betting, Platinum Scissors into equal favouritism now with uh, Helenus, both at two to one equal favourite. And when they heard that Gay might be running Platinum Scissors in the Melbourne Cup, they slashed its price to 33 to one. Interesting, isn't it? So Platinum Scissors, who knows? If he wins the Derby, he might be at Flemington three days later on the first Tuesday in November. Burnborough is one of the greatest horses ever to race in Australia and one of the greatest controversies ever on an Australian race course happened at Caulfield in 1946. It was 56 years ago, but the bait still rages. Did Athel Mully pull up Burnborough on that day? Well, his explanation, never seen before, is coming up shortly. Mully said he received many threats, including shotguns aimed at his bed, and rumours were wild during an era of reckless gambling. What sort of offers did you get? to stop Burnborough in those days? Uh, offered 50,000 in Newmarket. 50,000 pounds? Uh, pounds. And I could have got 80,000 on sale at the Caulfield Cup. 80,000 pounds yeah. in 1946? 46. Be worth a million dollars today? Millions today. This money's not everything, is it? Fantastic crowd here today. It is really building and we've been very lucky with the weather in Melbourne. But uh, fabulous scenes here at Caulfield. It is one of the great races uh, in Australia. And as we said, uh, the first leg of this double with the Melbourne Cup. Who have been some of your favourites over the years to have won the Caulfield Cup? Oh, I think you could say Red Craze, Tobin Bronze in more recent year. I thought Might and Power and of course Tullock was in a perhaps a class of his own. Bar one, which I think we're coming to. Yeah, with Burnborough, who didn't win in 1946. Ten stone ten he carry, Max. Have you got any idea what that might be in kilos? Well, no, but I know this, that it's probably uh, a stone in the old or over a stone overweight for age, and that's the merit of it. That's, uh, uh, you know, you measure horses by what they do over the weight for age scale. Tullock carried a round weight for age. Burnborough just carried a, his own grandstand, his own personal grandstand over it. He did. It's around about 68 or 69 kilos that he was carrying as 7-4 to four favourite in what was probably the most controversial Caulfield Cup on record, to tell us all about Neil Kearney. Burnborough, idol of the Australian turf, long striding rival of the late great Farlap, and without question one of the greatest race horses Australia has produced. He's a great horse to ride. Change your hands on him, he'd go. Give him a click, click up and away he'd go. Athel George Mully was a legend of the post-war years, of a turbulent time when fortunes were won or lost on every race. 
an era dominated by the partnership of Mully and the mighty Bay Stallion, Burn. Today, Mully up. He's out to show the world what a great Australian racehorse looks like under the critical analysis of the slow motion camera. No, Burnborough won 26 his of his well 38 apart. starts, including 15 in a row with Mully on his back. Now watch the true poetry of this rhythmic marvel's movements, as with all four feet off the ground, he covers 25 feet in a stride. Burnborough had a stride which swallowed up the track, sweeping him from last to first in spine-tingling finishes, making him the idol of a nation which needed sporting heroes to forget the ravages of war. Now Burnborough's moving up, he's fifth last. Watch him. Mully takes him round the field and quickly wins his way through. Mully was a born horseman who continued to work with horses through the rest of his days. But he died with the stigma of the most controversial race of all, the 1946 Caulfield Cup. A hundred thousand people, some of them dressed up to the nines, came to see Burn, the seven to four favourite and top one. He and Mully were going for 16 straight. But the champion raced back in the field, got blocked for a run, and then ran home for a controversial fifth. Trainer Harry Plant immediately sacked Mully for showing, as he put it, no judgment. When we discussed that Caulfield Cup back in 1990, Mully, then 70, still showed the scars of that incident. I didn't want to ride him in the Caulfield Cup, really. If I had my life over again, now what I know now, I wouldn't have rode him. I, wanted to, I didn't want to ride him in the Caulfield Cup. Did they suggest, George, that you'd pull the horse up? Oh, yes. A lot of people did. I never. How did you answer that? I couldn't answer it at all. See, if someone thinks something, well, they, you can't have a good argument with them, is it? She'd never run the Caulfield Cup. Kept me for a white parade race, he'd never got beaten. He went through his whole career without being beaten, I'd say. Why'd they run him in the Caulfield Cup? Oh, greedy. Thought he was invincible. Mully said he received many threats, including shotguns aimed at his bed. And rumours were wild during an era of reckless gambling. What sort of offers did you get to stop Burnber in those days? Well, I offered 50,000 new market. 50,000 pounds? Uh, pounds. And I could have got 80,000 on sale at the Caulfield Cup. 80,000 pounds in 1946? 46. 46. Be worth a million dollars today? Millions today. Money's not everything, is it? Did you think about taking it, George? No, never. Never in my mind. Did you see the money? See the money, he opened the case. And it was there? It was there. Did That's you fear for your life? No. Not in those days. Why not? Well, I always think of black and a shoot you, shoot you. He wouldn't come and tell you, would he? After the 1946 Caulfield Cup, Marley never Burnborough, saw George. Burnborough again. No. Ever seen another burn, bruh? No, nah, not in our time. Only see one in a lifetime, don't you? One champion in a lifetime. I only saw three champions in my life. Laura Lindrum, Burn Barra and Dawn Fraser. I mean, the three champions I ever saw. Marley passed away last year, but he will be remembered as one of the great natural riders. Burnborough died at start in Kentucky in 1960, having been bought for a record £93,000 by the movie producer Louis B. Mayer. Yes, Burnborough was a Hollywood epic. Last year, the horse was one of the first inductees into Racing's Hall of Fame, in company with Carbine, Tullock, Kingston Town and Farlap. He's a champion of champions, and he belongs to all Australia. Well, the crowd's uh, big today. They look a little different than they did in 1946, but the same enthusiasm is here. What a horse, what a story. Ethel George Murray telling his tale there with Neil Kearney after uh, Burnborough in 1946.
Horses in the mounting yard for the Melbourne Racing Club stakes. Assertive level, he's no burn for, in fact, George Money's a tough marker. What about Paul Bradman and Farlap and Tullock? But Assertive Lad has won a Doncaster in the day. He won that, he looked a champion. Can he come back to winning form? Yes, well, you, you'd, you'd have to, to doubt. Well, he can. He's a racehorse and anything's possible. But certainly, uh, if you saw him last start when he was 14th out of 15th at Flemington, you'd say he couldn't. But nevertheless, looking at him, he looks well today and it'll be interesting just to see what he does so we can gauge his future potential. Sports number two. He's uh, an eight-year-old. There's some old sprinters in this race. They've been around for a bit. He's won a Lightning and an Oakley Plate, and he won the Liston this time in. His last couple have been down, 11 from the Gilgai. Yeah, he does like Caulfield, though, an old horse. They, they can't put it together like the youngsters. There's one notable exception, I know. But uh, uh, perhaps uh, if, he, if he had a flashback to, uh, well, even a few months back, he could make a showing here. Damien Oliver on this horse, Bacata for Lee Freeman. He's won an all stakes and has editor stakes. Struggled a bit this time up. Eighth in the Manicato, last up 13th in the Gilgai. But Lee's got him looking well. Uh, he's another one of the question mark horses today. He's got to do something uh, to signify just uh, whether he's, he's going to be a major force this spring, but he looks the part. Fritz, interesting headgear there. He was uh, third on Wednesday, over 1,200 behind Lewinsky. He has won a Group 1 Telegraph in New Zealand a few years back and won the Mudgeway, the race that someone won first up here. So there's a bit of pedigree there, but he is getting long on the tooth. Yes, looks lean and fit and hard, and uh, I don't particularly like that bandage on the, uh, the hind leg, but nevertheless, uh, a lot of these horses, it is their gear. They race better with it than without it. Got a good strike rate, Prince Rupertson, one at Flemington last start over 1,400. Was a failure before that in the Dubai Cup when he finished 17th here, but uh, he uh, has a good record at this course. Yes, the two barrier, Nash, Ruwilla, Brian Mayfield, Smith. Uh, they're three factors he's got going for him, and uh, certainly he'll make a bold showing. El Nino, seventh in the Gilgai. Three starts at Caulfield for three wins before the Gould guy was third at Flemington. Dennis Cometti, well-known football commentator, is a part owner of El Nino. Yes, and horses for courses uh, is one of the, the, the major factors when assessing form, and uh, certainly El Nino is a Caulfield horse. Flavor's nine years of age now. He's won one and a half million dollars in stakes. He was seventh behind Prince Rubiton at Flemington. He's won some good races over the years. His best was a Salinger way back in 1998. Well, that flavour hardly looks a seven-year-old. He's still got a bit, a bit of bloom about him, but uh, again, he'd have to have a flashback to the past to figure in this. Craig knew it up on Jai's jump, number nine, number eight is scratched. Ninth at Flemington in the Gilgai, ninth at Caulfield. Did win the Munro quality in the autumn. Yes, and is working up to a bold performance. Uh, I would say this is it today. Uh, uh, I, I can't get enthusiastic enough to tip him, but I'll be very surprised if he doesn't run well. I know you think Salgado's a real chance for John Hawkes, Darren Gauchy. Ninth in the Doombin 10,000 in the winter, sixth at the Theo Marks this year, and last start was ninth in the Bill Ritchie. Yes, and was beaten only two starts back, under two lengths by Defire. Uh, he looks good today. Uh, the 13 gate is a worry, but uh, that's Darren Gauchy's worry. Uh, with any luck in the running, I think he can figure in the finish. Karen McAvoy's on 11 for a shark. He's up in class, but he was 11th, or rather 10th behind Palladium Star last Saturday on Guineas Day here at Caulfield. Yeah, well, uh, it certainly, uh, his last start performance was, was, was average, to say the least, but uh, there have been some runs he's produced that would give him some hope here. Kenneth's an up-and-comer. He was fourth at Cranbourne last start, didn't have a lot of luck. That was over 1,200, and he was seventh over the same distance at Sandown before that. Craig Williams to ride. Yeah, his form can be patchy. He's got ability. He's just got to put it together on the one day. Perhaps today is the day. Al Bulbo went to Perth uh, late last year and ran 10th in the Western Australian Derby. Second up today. His first up run was 8th at the Valley, over 1,200. Had two runs. Um, perhaps uh, would be better placed in something easier. Pomeroy is a horse with some potential here. Colin Alderson's had great success on this day with Sky Heights. Glenn Boss, the jockey, won a country cup at Caulfield in February. Second up today was fifth at the Valley over 1,200. Well, as you would expect, Colin's got him looking very fit and very well. And uh, uh, under those circumstances, Pomeroy's got an outside hope. 
and Tarkula midnight number 15 here. Uh, won at Sandown two starts ago and then second at Flemington last start, up in class. Yes, uh, Tarkula midnight uh, will be tested by the, the rise in grade. Uh, drawn a little bit awkwardly, there are others I prefer more. Well, one of the favourites, if not the outright favourite, is Prince Rubiton, Brian Mayfield-Smith, the trainer with Peter Donegan. Brian Mayfield-Smith, you couldn't have him looking much better. He looks terrific in the yard. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with his condition, but we've got to ride him for luck and hope that we get the brakes in the running. And I mean, that only time will tell whether that happens, uh, especially after Lord Voltra. You had to do that uh, at Flemington with this horse too, and everything just fell into place for him. He got a lovely smother in the run. Yeah, he did, and it helped him a lot. I mean, unfortunately, that doesn't work all the time. People have got other ideas, but uh, we'll try and ride him in the same manner and hope we get, you know, that kind of run again. Brian, big crowd, lots of noise when he came into the mounting yard. The PA speakers went off. He jumped around a bit. Is he normally a bit edgy on race days? Not too bad, but, you know, it just unsettles him a bit sometimes. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. Best of luck. Hope the brakes go your way this time. <laughs> Thanks. Prince Rubiton's trainer, Brian Mayfield-Smith, with Peter Donegan. This is a race six, the Melbourne Racing Club stakes. Race eight today, the $2.5 million Carlton Draft Corfield Cup. Beekeepers on the course. The horse from the Godolphin Stables. Race six today, the Melbourne Racing Club stakes, $125,000. Group three over 1,400 metres. On this fine day at Caulfield, breezy but plenty of sun about. This uh, in its own right an important race, but probably a good guide to the, the big mile at Flemington on the final day. The race that Mr Lofty may go for now, the Emirates, on the final day. But you expect a winner here or a place getter to be aimed at that race. Number nine, we see there, Jai's Jump. See the assertive lad is at $16.20. Those dividends scrolling through on the bottom of your screen. They're the latest update for the three totalizators around Australia. There's assertive lad, mm. Doncaster winner. What a two-year-old he was as well. Yes, and he's certainly getting to that uh, that Waterhouse bone and muscle, which is is so famous. But but had a very serious setback, and form is a vital area. And horses have got to show that they're back to that form. Well, we've heard from Brian Mayfield Smith. He's happy with Prince Rupert. I wonder how John lets. Uh, feels the horse looks to him yeah well the horse looks very well he was a little bit fired up uh, in the yard as you boys mentioned i did hear that down the line but uh, around here he's very relaxed he looks good he's ready to run a, a, a 1400 meter race i can tell you he looks very well national will of the ride the other horse that caught my eye too was number three bacata looked very very well damien oliver's, oliver's right this horse looks very relaxed as well and also number six el nino looked very very well with greg childs on both these three horses have relaxed very well, so if you back them, you know that your horses are going into the race and they're ready to run. 14 to run here. The one scratching is number eight, Lethal Lee. So there's Prince Rubiton. Rubitano, his stable mate, runs in them the next race on the program. They've had a great uh, record for Brian Mayfield Smith. Buck Carter, we see. John Hawkes' uh, Salgado in the race. There's a sort of lad. We've got a nice for assertive lad, Bruce, but, uh, you know, it, it, uh, he's getting that lean look about him and uh, it'll be interesting just to see how well he does go today. Salgado, we've been told, has been uh, spec pretty heavily in the ring. Look at Prince Rubiton with uh, Nash Ruwilla here. In the background there is Frere Jacques. It's one of the outsiders to be ridden by Karen McAvoy, assertive lad in the foreground there. McAvoy uh, has been in really good form. Brew really put him on the map, didn't he, winning that Melbourne Cup a couple of years back? Yes, but he's gone on from there. He's a very polished rider now, and one for, for one who is so young, you know, shows you the enormous potential he has with, with experience. And like Craig Williams, if he did, had a stint in Hong Kong now, I think it would round him off perfectly. So the gates have been closed, are about to come up. There's the latest betting, $4.10 Prince Rubiton, $6 El Nino, $6.30 for, Buck, uh, for Fritz, I should say, $7 Salgado, and then we go out to $10.60 for Bar Carter. Here's Assertive Lad, Jimmy Cassidy about to come up, Gay Waterhouse one with Jim, the Norman Robinson on Platinum Scissors. So the news out of the day so far, Sunline definitely to retire after the Cox Plate. Trevor McKee came up to tell us that. Platinum Scissors possibly to go for the Melbourne Cup. Certainly, if he gets through the derby, it could be on. And Bart Cummings telling us that Magical missed the injury. Not as bad as I first thought. Probably won't have to be operated on 
and uh, probably a six to eight week recovery. So some good news there for Magical Miss. So four dollars and six ten. Four dollars for number five Prince Rubiton. Six ten El Nino. Six fifty now for Fritz and 680 for Salgado. How do you like them backing up like Fritz was backing up from Wednesday? Oh, they can do it. Uh, they're tough enough. They're fit enough at this stage of the preparation. I think uh, that won't come against him. Prince Rubiton is a fraction longer than $4 in the ring. $4 equates to 3 to 1, so he's edging out towards each way odds, and that is at 4 to 1. So 3 or 4 to come up. Here's Salgado. That's Max's selection in the race from the John Hawke stable. Darren Gauchi to ride. Been joined by Pomeroy and also Frere Jacques as we join Brian Martin for his call. Yeah, Frere Jacques completes the line. Prince Rubiton is favourite for the race. They're set to go. The line is blinking. And the line is good. Set now. now. A bit of movement out wide from the gate from Kennett. This is race six here at Corpia Signal Racing. Assertive led bounded away down on the inside with Prince Riverton. They began quickly and going fast after the start here is Sports heading up towards the front on the outside of Assertive led. They're going fairly quick early and Bacata quickly got up third and Prince Riverton fourth and fifth Al Nino. Further back was Flavor followed by Al Bulbar, Jai's jump. Further back then Prince Frere, Jaka Kennett. A length further back than Tarkula Midnight from Pomeroy and Salgado two lengths last of all. Strung right out from the leader down on the inside Sports a length and a half Assertive lad. A length further back for Carter third. Prince Rubiton is on the fence fourth. A length in El Nino. One for the back Al Bulbar and Flavor there. Followed for the back by Jai's jump. Frere Jaka from Fritz in the middle is Kennett. Two for the back. Tarkula midnight followed by Pomeroy and Salgado last about 12 lengths from the lead. At the 600 metre mark and Sports just in front. Assertive lad going up on the outside to have a crack at him in there. Three lengths for Carter. Prince Rubiton fourth the fence. A length and a half El Nino. These back markers will need to get a wriggle on further back then play the Jai's jump Fritz Salgado back second last but Assertive Lad hit the front on the turn and straightening up Assertive Lad in front now from Sports 2 then to Prince Rubiton into the clear Bacata struggling El Nino coming down the middle Assertive Lad the leader at the 150 metre mark he's over two in front El Nino trying to get him from Prince Rubiton Assertive Lad is finding plenty El Nino trying to finish off and grab him but Assertive Lad Assertive Lad a half length to El Nino three away third Prince Rubiton and Salgado came home well to run fourth he's out wide, they're followed for the back of the race by Sports, Tarkula Midnight and then came Flavor, Al Bulbar, a gap for Erejaka, Fritz didn't come on from Jai's jumper, Carter dropped off before the turn from Kennett and Pomeroy near the tail. Well he's bounced back this horse, he's won about 3.3 million dollars in prize money he's broken 123, what a dashing ride by Jim Cassidy he sat behind Sports and then decided to take him on on the turn and pinch a break and despite the big weight today He's been able to get home, has the class horse assertive lad. A couple of group ones as a two-year-old, including the champagne on the size, but on the turn, assertive lad is ready to strike. No doubt about that. He's about to go for home, and go home he does. He pinches a break. El Nino Vacada are the first to come after him, and Prince Rubiton gets uh, out of his pocket, but uh, Cassidy riding hard here. He's a couple in front of Assertive Lad, this five-year-old. Trying to get to him, El Nino, from the McAvoy stable, and then Prince Rubiton, but Assertive Lad is back, and he's back into big-time racing with a really strong performance here today. Gay's back in town, that's for sure. No doubt about that. Uh, Assertive Lad Cassidy definitely brought the best out of him. There's uh, no excuses for anything behind them. He did it tough up front. He did it hard.